response to the abiotic factor that uh, thermoregulation need to discuss about the regulate as uh, i do remember you once again the regulate which means uh, homeothermic animals are having this kind of property that regulate that means they are going to regulate the body temperature their body temperature is going to be constant the constant body temperature irrespective of atmospheric temperature which we can say regulate or homeothermic or warm blooded animals we can say them as homeothermic or warm blooded animals okay so uh, how do they regulate that body temperature the regulation of the body temperature the constant body temperature is possible in the homeothermic animals is because of uh, energy expenditure of the energy for example if the human body temperature is 37 degrees centigrade if the body temperature raises the expenditure is going to be the water the sweat and they regulate the body temperature if the body temperature falls down below the 37 degrees centigrade the expenditure is going to be atp that means by muscle contraction shivering we used to say and liver also break the uh, the, the glucose molecules to get the energy liver produces the heat and muscle contraction makes the production of heat so that means with this you try to understand these particular lines given here thermoregulation is energetically expensive especially for small animals okay but for all the organisms of aves and mammalia that in case of aves and mammalia the regulate is a condition which gives expenditure of uh, sweat when temperature rises expenditure of energy when temperature down okay so uh, it was going to be it was announced that the thermoregulation energetically expensive okay for all but especially for small animals like shrews and humming birds they are very small animals which they are saying they can't tolerate this expenditure they have a larger surface area relative to their volume so they lose body heat very fast when it is cold outside so then they have to expend much energy to generate the body heat therefore very small animals are rare in polar regions to understand this particular phenomena we need to know the bergman's rule what bergman says bergman explained about the volume and surface area he generalized the homeothermic animals that uh, volume and uh, surface area he said that in case of uh, tropics let's go to the white board to understand this particular phenomena in case of uh, uh, tropics and uh, temperate region let's take more colder region that is poles okay the volume and surface area that uh, volume of uh, homeothermic animals and surface area of homeothermic animals when we discuss this we'll able to understand that how it become expensive so volume of uh, organisms at pole volume of organisms at uh, surface area of the organisms at pole okay so how it related to the thermoregulation that means you should understand if the volume is more organism can produce more heat that you need to understand that volume is equally proportional to the production of heat that you have to understand okay so volume is equally proportion to the production of heat if volume is more equally proportional to the heat proportional to the heat production so that we need to understand so volume is equally proportional to the heat production so in tropics already heat is there the temperature is enough good so that's why what we can expect here in the tropics the homeothermic animal size should be less next surface area more surface area more loss of heat less surface area less loss of heat so that means uh, what do you say surface area is equally proportional to the equally proportional to the 
loss of heat surface area equally proportional to the loss of heat that you have to understand okay so in that the tropical region a homeothermic animal a warm blooded animal living in the tropics is what kind of problem they have they should lose the heat because outside temperature is so high okay so the surface area should be volume should be the tropics organism volume should be less but surface area should be more so finally we are declaring the homeothermic animals who are living in homeothermic animals who are living in the tropics the volume should be less and surface area should be more we are declaring like this this is bergman's rule then homeothermic animals at poles and the temperate regions homeothermic animals or warm blooded animals are regulate those who are living in the poles their volume should be more because they are living in the colder region that's why the production of heat should be more so that's why volume should be more and surface area is less this is bergman's rule this is a bergman's rule okay now let us try to understand that given lines here that uh, the they have larger surface area relative to their volume the humming birds and shrews their volume is less and surface area more in case of humming birds and small sized mammal small sized homeothermic animal so what is given the small sized homeothermic animal the volume is less surface area is more you see here where it is suitable less volume more surface area less volume more surface area suitable for tropical living in the case of uh, small sized animals so that's why we are going to say at poles there is no possibility of these kind of small sized animals will face lot of problem there that's why we'll find less number of animal that means we are explaining this particular issue based on the bergman's rule bergman said this so even you don't remember the bergman but uh, his rule to be remembered over to understand the text sentences here bergman's rule we used to say this is a bergman's rule okay so that's about uh, the responses to the abiotic factors and the two things to be remembered the regulate homeothermic animals that uh, see the graph once uh, check out the graph here the red line indicate that irrespective of any body temperature any atmospheric temperature body temperature is going to be that constant whatever the external level internal level is going to be constant that is regulate now you see the confirmers about the confirmers you see this green line confirmers that what is external level that depends on the that means whatever the internal level depends on the external level that means they don't regulate they don't uh, change their body temperature along with the extra atmospheric temperature the body temperature is going to be changed over they don't pay any effort okay so they are not going to pay any effort here in this particular case okay 99% of the animals and nearly all plants cannot maintain a constant internal environment is that we said now apes and mammals are only maintaining the body temperature constant so their body temperature or osmotic concentration change with the surrounding condition that's why we call them as confirmers yes in case of aquatic animals osmotic concentration of the body fluids changes with that of ambient osmotic concentration Yes, and uh, the particular aquatic animals are having uh, their own uh, adaptations so what these confirmers do mostly confirmers what they do when extreme uh, temperatures come or uh, the those who cannot tolerate even in the regulate like birds many animals like birds move away temporarily from stressful habitat to a more hospitable area and return when stressful period is over so example we have the during winter kaladu kaladu national park bharatpur bird sanctuary we used to say the rajasthan it located it host migratory birds coming from siberia and other extremely cold uh, northern regions so now the doubt may come over the birds are actually homeothermic animals so why they are showing migrate so that means whatever the conditions present outside they are intolerable there 
and uh, they require more energy to uh, the expenditure of more energy they have to spend over to stay there so that's why they migrate in uh, bacteria suspend we say in bacteria fungi and lower plants thick walled spores help to survive unfavorable condition whenever the suitable conditions are appeared they germinate again in higher plants seeds and some vegetative reproductive structures serve to tide over a periods of stress by reducing their metabolic activity they germinate under favorable moisture and temperature we have some animal examples hibernation of bears during winter estivation of some snails and fishes during summer the diapa the stage of suspended development of many zooplanktons in lakes and ponds and we know the story of frog that also go for hibernation and estivation adaptations various kinds of adaptations we have in the organisms adaptation is the morphological physiological and behavioral attribute for what which enable the organism to survive and reproduce in its habitat the many adaptations have evolved over a long evolutionary time and uh, they are genetically fixed even that will the character that evolutionary character adaptation adaptive characters are coming to the next generations also if we have some examples adaptations of the kangaroo rat in north american deserts the internal fat oxidation gives water as a by product if there is no external source of water what they do they break fat they break the fat and they get uh, water from there they break the fat and they get the water next uh, they have a greater ability to concentrate the urine so that the minimal volume of water is used to remove excretory product and uh, the well known adaptations of the desert plants you can see the opensia on the screen presence of thick cuticle and leaf surface not to lose the water from the body and their stomata are arranged in deep pits to minimize water loss through transpiration a special photosynthetic pathway crassulation acid metabolism pathway we use it to say cam metabolism that enables their stomata to remain closed during day time they open only during night time for the leave to leave the water that means uh, the stomata the to protect uh, the water loss that crassulation acid metabolism pathway they have enables their stomata to remain closed during day time desert plants like opensia have no leaves so you can see here they reduce it to spines and photosynthesis is done by stems adaptations of mammals the mammals from the colder climates have shorter ears limbs to reduce heat loss that is called allen's rule let's take out a general rule of the allen's uh, will learn first the allen uh, classified it as three reasons tropical and uh, temperate and uh, poles let's talk about them tropical temperate and poles he is just talked about extremities that means ear tail snout likewise we'll take ear as an example we know that because of bergman's rule more surface area more loss of heat more surface area more loss of heat so that's why tropical reason due to the higher temperatures that ears of the particular organism they need to lose the heat from the body isn't it so that's why their ears are much larger in size when it comes to the temperate region the size of the ears is reduced that is not to lose the heat from the body and the poles the ears are very much minimized the size of the ears is much reduced here why not to lose the heat from the body so try to understand the difference here why the tropics animals living in the tropics their ears are larger in size that is to lose the heat from the body because their external environment with the, with the huge temperature so that's why they should lose the heat from the body then in the poles why the small ears they have are very reduced uh, very smaller in size why they have that's so simple to say not to lose the heat from the body because that is a very much colder reason isn't it so that is allen's rule to be remembered that we have an example 
the mammals from colder climates have shorter ears and limbs to reduce the heat loss. Next, aquatic mammals like seals have a thick layer of fat, blubber, we use it to say, below their skin that acts as an insulator and reduces the loss of body heat. And we have some physiological and biochemical adaptations, archibacteria, which are found in the hot springs and deep sea hydrothermal vents where the temperature is more than 100 degrees centigrade. Many fish thrive in Antarctic waters where the temperature is below 0 degrees centigrade. Many marine invertebrates and fishes live at great depths in the ocean where the pressure is more than 100 times in the normal atmospheric pressure. We know that in the case of ocean, for every 10 meters, one atmospheric pressure is going to be increased over. That means uh, uh, that external atmosphere which we are living is one atmosphere. In case of ocean, for every one meter, 10, for every 10 meters, one atmosphere is going to be increased over. So that means at one kilometer range, when you go into the ocean in the deeper, that nearly that 100 atmospheric pressure, if a human being goes there, in that pressure, human will blast out. That what we mean, how the remaining organisms are living there. So simple, that's what we are talking about. Many marine invertebrates and fishes live at a great depth in the ocean where the pressure is more than 100 times than the normal atmospheric pressure. They have the specific adaptation to survive in that particular high pressure conditions. Going up now at high altitude places that where the more than 3,500 meters, we feel altitude sickness. Its symptoms are nausea, heart palpitation, fatigue. Why? This is due to low atmospheric pressure. So the body does not get enough oxygen. We have to discuss this. Let's take a, a small uh, that uh, conclusion here. We'll take uh, the small information about this, that higher altitudes, how does that particular pressure? We have some application questions here. You may get uh, as a weightage as a breathing and exchange of gases or from here. So let's talk about. We know atmospheric pressure is 760 mm of Hg. In general way, we use it to say. For 100% gases, atmospheric pressure is 760 mm of Hg. 21%, oxygen occupies 21% here, isn't it? 21%. For 21%, how much we can expect? 159 mm of Hg. That means at uh, on the earth, we say at oxygen partial pressure is going to be 159 mm of Hg. Okay. Now we are going to the altitude, 3,500 meters above. What happens? Atmospheric pressure is going to be as much as low. I, I just am giving an example here. For example, atmospheric pressure is there, 380 mm of Hg. That means for 100% gases, atmospheric pressure is 380 mm of Hg. There even we'll find 21% oxygen. No doubt about that. There even we have 21% oxygen. But you see, when atmospheric pressure reduced, in that the 21% oxygen which is present there is also going to be reduced over. That means how much we have? Half, 80 mm of Hg. Okay. So that means we know that at 104, nearly 104 mm of Hg or 90-95 mm of Hg. That, okay, that we'll discuss in breathing and exchange. So certain oxygen partial pressure is required over for the binding of uh, oxygen with hemoglobin. Okay, the complete saturation of oxygen with hemoglobin required some oxygen partial pressure. We used to say 95 mm of Hg is required, nearly 95 to 100. Okay, but here we have less oxygen partial pressure, isn't it? So that's why the total hemoglobin cannot bind with that means saturation is not happen that we are talking this much oxygen partial pressure is not sufficient for the binding of oxyhemoglobin so that means less oxygen transport is going to be happening here because of less oxygen partial pressure because of low atmospheric partial pressure you take the screenshot of this that is because it's very very important concept this one so low oxygen partial pressure, don't say don't low oxygen percentage. Oxygen percentage is always same, but low atmospheric pressure makes low oxygen partial pressure, 
low oxygen partial pressure makes incomplete saturation of the oxygen with hemoglobin so what is the solution for this we have a solution that means uh, if we have 5 million rbc at the normal condition these people will have 8 million rbc or 9 million rbc that means they have more number of rbc they increase the number of rbc transport uh, this particular oxygen we call this condition as polycythemia so the question will be asked in the same manner polycythemia is normal in the people who is or living in the mountain ranges why the polycythemia is very normal in the people polycythemia is disease for us in general on the uh, general uh, normal places where people are living but in high altitude in the mount high mountain ranges polycythemia is a compensation to transport the more number of oxygen because of under low pressure we can't fulfill that each hemoglobin should carry four oxygen molecules generally but here it is carrying only two oxygen molecule if it is so that we should increase the number of rbc so increasing number of rbc here we are not going to say like that when you visit the place immediately your rbc number will increase but we are talking about the people who are living there those people who are living who are adapted to live there the polycythemia is going uh, uh to be a normal condition there what about the people uh, who visit there that means the tourist that in the high mountain ranges that's what we are talking about the symptoms are nausea heart palpitation fatigue this kind of conditions can be expected because instead of carrying four oxygen molecule the hemoglobin is carrying only two oxygen molecule or one oxygen molecule or three oxygen molecule less than the normal so we we get less oxygen trust support because of under low oxygen partial pressure this is the application which uh, left uh, which is there in this area very very few applications we have in this chapter so that's i should focus here like this okay now moving on gradually we acclimatize the situation and the body compensate low oxygen availability by increasing rbc and breathing rate and decreasing the binding capacity of hemoglobin that's what we called it as people who settle there they have the condition called polycythemia moving on to the behavior adaptation on screen you can see the lizard basking under the sun desert lizards bask in the sun and absorb the heat when their body temperature is low but move into shade when the ambient temperature start increasing we call this as partial regulate in the graph we can see, we can show like this partially regulate i do remember here once uh, regulate line will come external and internal level confirmer will come like this this is partial regulate okay some species are capable of burrowing into the soil to hide and escape from the above ground heat so that's it about the organisms now we move with the populations in organisms and populations we are completed organisms and now we are moving with the populations